Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video again about Ryzen 3000. In today's video we will talk about clocking per CCX, which is what I think the most interesting way of clocking Ryzen 3000 manually at the moment. That's what we will do at the beginning. Then we will take a look at a very interesting behavior when it comes to extreme overclocking high voltages, something that you can experience using for example chilled water, dry ice, liquid nitrogen, you typically wouldn't encounter it with AIO or air cooling, but we will still take a look at it. And also we will talk about idle power consumption, which is the most impressive part or feature about Ryzen 3000 and something nobody talked about yet. With Ryzen 3000, we cannot clock the cores individually. Or actually we can, but the problem is the clock difference between the individual cores has to be at least one gigahertz. So if we clock the first core higher, let's say to 4.5, then the second core would always be at 3.5. There's always this clock difference. It's related to the divider of the CPU. And that's why it only makes sense to clock the CCXs individually, but not, not the cores. As you can see, if I right click in my CPU Z, all the CCXs are already clocked to the given clock. I push the core voltage to 1.35, which I think is a very ideal voltage for the Ryzen 3000. Um, above doesn't really scale anymore, and at this point the power consumption is not that high. I'm using the Strix X570F gaming motherboard. Memory is currently clocked at 3200 MHz, just to be sure to have a stable base. You know that the CCXs are up to four cores. This is a 12 core, so we have four CCXs with three cores each. If we would have four cores each, it would be the 16 core, the 3950X, which will be released in September. There you can see this CPU functions tool, which I got from Asus. I hope that I can provide this to you in the download box. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to publish this or if this is already public somewhere. I already asked and I'm waiting for a reply about this. It's basically the same as using the Ryzen Master where, where you can clock the CCXs individually, but I think this tool is a little bit more convenient and doesn't have this nice graphics interface, but it works really, really well. You can see CCX3 is set to 4350 megahertz, which you can also see if I right click into CPU-Z. First CCX is at 4.5, second C CCX is at 4.45, and then the third and fourth um, CCX are at 4.35. What I did is basically just testing each CCX individually, see which is the maximum clock I can run in R15, and then I down clocked by 25 megahertz to have a little bit more margin. So those clocks are just R15 stable, they are not Prime 95 stable. For daily clocks, you can um, reduce the clock by about 150 megahertz, or yeah, 100 to 150 megahertz to have a daily stable value. But this tool works really, really nice. For example, we can push the CCX number three to 4400, just enter the number, apply. If I right click into CPU-Z, you can see it already applied on the last three cores on the last CCX. Putting this back at 4350, you can see it's again applied and with those settings I was able to achieve 3432 points in R15 multi, which is higher than what I would be able to if I would just clock all the cores to um, the same clock, then I would end up at like 4350 roughly because the last two CCXs were not as good as the first two. Looks like that's one chiplet which is a little bit better than the second chiplet, makes kind of sense because of the silicon lottery. So clocking by, per CCX is really, really cool. I wish or I hope that we will see this somehow implemented in the BIOS, that we can use this for daily clocks as well. We noticed an interesting behavior with CPUs with two CCDs, so 12 core and 16 core, which means that if you apply a core voltage of 1.55 or 1.6 V core to the CPU and then you suddenly apply a load, for example Cinebench R15, while you also really cool down your CPU to like 10 or 20 degrees Celsius to make sure we're not running in a temperature limit, then there is suddenly a spike in current which you can see on those graphs, the blue line is V-Core and the yellow line is the current. So the current really ramps up, spikes up to 240 amps, therefore causes the CPU to kind of notice that the power is not good, therefore the CPU shuts down. 
that's some kind of OCP behavior which I haven't seen before which is really triggered by the CPU itself it's not triggered by the mainboard otherwise we would be able to disable this kind of OCP behavior over the BIOS but in this case it's the CPU itself that triggers this kind of OCP it's something I haven't seen before which I wanted to show you Using LN2 with the 12 core I also observed how the V-core is really changing. That's something that always occurs, especially with extreme overclocking. The voltage is not as stable as it seems using just software. It always would read, for example, 1.55 volt, which is set to the CPU. But in reality, especially once you apply load like Cinematch R15, you can see a lot of voltage spikes going up and down depending on the load of the CPU. In this case, we have spikes going from 1.62 volt to down to 1.497, so there's a real big voltage fluctuation while this, the value set in BIOS is 1.55 but that's something that always happens just for you to see how it really looks in reality. Let's talk about idle power consumption. It's something reviewers didn't really talk about yet, probably nobody noticed or even checked it with a scope but if you attach a scope to the CPU and check the idle power consumption and also the voltage, especially the voltage in idle, it's absolutely impressive how low the voltage goes of the Ryzen 3000 CPUs, which is probably related also to the 7 nanometer process. Using 1.05 volt in Windows power saving mode, the voltage goes down to up to 0.2 volt. I've never seen such a low voltage before, which indicates or which also shows why Ryzen is so extremely energy efficient. Especially in idle, you will notice that some of the CPUs consume way less than 10 watt, which is really, really impressive. But you can see that it also really depends on what's going on in Windows. Whenever you do something, it just can be opening CPU Z, clicking something in hardware info, you have those spikes going up to or up back to 1.05 volts and then goes immediately back down to 0.2 volt. Those 1.05 volt spikes they can be as short as only two nano uh, two milliseconds which is really really short but still this feature shows why Ryzen 3000 can be so extremely power efficient. One of the most impressive features I've seen so far from Ryzen 3000 and something I think I haven't seen before from other reviewers. So much for this video. In the next Ryzen 3000 video, we will remove the cooler during load, during or while the setup is still running and see how the CPU behaves. Something we did before with the 9900K, also 8700K. Not sure if that will be the next video on the channel. We will see how it works out. So much about this. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon.